What is going on guys? Future Jack here. Just so you guys know, this episode is a double header against Monaco and Wolfsburg. Past Jack, I forgot about the fact that they were next to each other, these two massive games. Uh, so don't go turning off after the first game. There is a second one to look forward to and uh, hopefully you do enjoy. Anyway, Past Jack, take it away with the second intro of this episode. What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to episode 19 of our Bayer Leverkusen Let's Play here in Football Manager 2019. Today it is the last game of the Champions League group stage. A massive game with huge implications for our entire season. Since we last here we have played a few games so just to go through those quickly. Of course last time out was a double header against Bilbao and Schalke. Since then you can see four games played, only one win. A little disappointing. Uh, our first game you can see it against Manchester United in the Champions Champions League. Uh, we had our backs against the wall for a large, large spell in this game. Unfortunately for us, a moment of brilliance from Marcus Rashford, uh, the difference maker. I don't know if Horodesky could have done a little bit better, but he did keep us in the game for large spells, so I can't fault him too much. Um, but yeah, that would have been a massive point if we could have held on for it. But away from home against Manchester United, 1-0, not the worst result by any means. The next game we had against Stuttgart, a fairly comfortable result. Uh, the big kind of positive takeaway was the fact that Tavokarigi finally scored. It was a header, and uh, well, we followed that up with a goal from Miguel Almiron. Unfortunately for us, we couldn't hold on to a clean sheet. Uh, we conceded through Tassos Donis for them. Uh, but away from home, a good win. But unfortunately, the only win that we've mustered up in this run of league games that we had coming up, this the first of three since you were last here. And uh, yeah, it could have been a little bit different on another day. I feel like it should have been more comfortable. A clean sheet would have been nice. Anyway, the next game we had was against Mainz, a team who have been going very, very well this year. A bizarre own goal opened up the goal scoring in this game. Leon Bailey, I'm not sure what he was doing. I don't know if it was match fixing. Answers on a postcard, what you think. They followed that up with a goal really soon into the second half as well, Illich getting it. And at that point, I was starting to worry a little bit. We were offered a route back into the game, though, through a Miguel Almir on penalty, which he took. Leon Bailey scored a really nicely worked goal. Worked down the left-hand side initially, pulled across. It was a relative tap-in for the Jamaican international. And well, with the wind in our sails and momentum potentially on our side, we looked destined to go on and get the lead in this game. Unfortunately, however, uh, Lucas Romero, two bookings in five minutes within the last ten minutes of the game, saw him get red-carded and sent off. And from there, we kind of just had to settle for the point which uh, at the start of the game would have been a disappointing result but I guess given the fact we were 2-0 down I've got to try and take some positivity away from it and our most recent game against another team who have been going pretty, pretty well Hamburg in this game, they opened up the goal scoring through Rick van uh, Drongelen. Uh, a nice strike, to be fair, by him. And early on, it really caught us off guard. However, he uh, turned hero for them to, well, villain, as he got an own goal. A deflected shot by Volland. I think it may have been going in anyway, but regardless, the own goal was given. However, Volland did get a goal, and it does break a little bit of a goal scoring drought for him. A mistake that he capitalised on. A tidy little finish, to be fair. We looked destined to win this game. However, in the last five minutes, Jero getting the goal for them uh, came on off the bench and he was the hero. He got the goal, which saw them take a share of the spoils. And well, when you look at the stats... I feel like it's a game that we probably should be winning ultimately. Kind of odd as well that Tonali, uh, Jedvai and Markovic were all in this hamburger kind of team. I apparently forgot in my loan outs to specify that they couldn't play against us. I don't know if that's my own fault, but Tonali did get an 8.2 rating. And to be fair, if we just look at him, he's been improving a hell of a lot this year. I'm kind of excited to have him back. But at the same time, the regular football he's getting this year really is aiding his development. So uh, I'm kind of happy for him to be playing for Hamburg, who have been doing very, very well. So anyway, looking at the league table, bizarrely, Wolfsburg, top of the league, seven points clear. For a little while now, I've been sat thinking, well, Bayern have got to get back into it. Dortmund have got to start performing. Dortmund have just sacked their manager after five games without a win, which did include the game against Bayern. Uh, you can see here Leipzig also. They found a little bit of form, I guess, as of late, but they have slipped up on a few occasions against Wolfsburg and Hamburg. And, uh, well, Bayern, on the other hand, you can see here, they beat Borussia Dortmund, but defeats against Frankfurt and Werder Bremen, who are up in third, mean that they are still way, way off the pace. 15 points behind Wolfsburg, 8 points behind us. I mean, the question is really, can Wolfsburg keep this going for the whole season? And if they can't, we need to just position ourselves as best as possible to try and capitalise on that. Of course, we did lose to Manchester United in the Champions League game most recently, 1-0. And, uh, well, the game today is the last game of the group stage. And you can see going into it, 
This could go any one way, any which way. Uh, genuinely, no idea what to expect from this game. It's it's going to be an interesting one. Uh, head to head against Bilbao is not great for us, but they play United today. I assume it goes to goal difference after head to head because we drew against Bilbao twice. I need to check this really, don't I? Uh, so, do, 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 where is the draw rules? We have, we need to be on the group stage. That would ha that would help as a starting point. Uh, so yeah, it does go to goal difference. So a draw would be good enough for us if Bilbao lost. Monaco though, they beat us three 0 last time out. They are rock bottom of the group. But if they beat us, they'd go ahead of Bilbao potentially. Um, in fact, I don't know if they would because of head to head. Uh, if Bilbao lose and they win, I guess they would. Either way, there's a million and one different permutations here for what could happen. I've just realised, just a little thing here. I've got the in-game editor on. Obviously, I started this game in the beta. I didn't uncheck the thing. Um, I've been having it on for doing the experiments. I know someone's going to call me out on this because I know how the internet works. Uh, you can see here, I've not used the editor uh, just just to show it normally. I just I do this. I don't know why I'm showing this, but I know it's the kind of thing where someone's going to be like, Jack, why is the in-game editor there? You can just... You can just turn it off normally, and uh, it's fine. Look, there you go. Right, let's get into this, shall we? As I said, I, I use the editor sometimes for, uh, what do you call it, for different videos, like the Pele video. I'm actually working on another Legends video with Maradona at the moment, which I use the in-game editor just to refine his stats at the start with um, off the database that I use. But anyway, let's not focus on that. We've got to focus on the here and now. We're taking on Monaco. This is the team that's going to do the business for us, I think. In goal, we've got Hradeski. I'm going with him. I'm putting my faith in him. Please be good for us. At the back, we're going to go with our new kind of centre-back partnership that's kind of been the go-to. It's going to be Jonathan Tarr. And alongside him, it's going to be Pongrasic, who, to be honest, has been performing great so far. A 7.26 average rating, a 7.15 in the Champions League games he's played in. He's not the best out-and-out -out defender, but in our very kind of ball-playing orientated system, he is the dream partner, really. Of course, we still got Retsos on the bench, who's improved a hell of a lot this year. Uh, and equally is as good, really. But his average ratings in the Champions League have been just a little lacking. So we're going to give um, Pongrasic the chance. Uh, Anchorman, I think we are going to go with Romero. Despite his sending off last time out, do I want to go with Romero? I don't know if I do. His form's been pretty atrocious. The obvious option is to bring in Sven Bender. You know what, Sven, you've not been in the best form, but I'm going to put faith in you here to turn things around. To his left, we're going to go with Wagnerman. We have got a few injuries to speak of. Vendel, you can see, out for two to four weeks. Ryan Sessegnon, out for 11 days to two weeks. As a result, Wagnerman, who is our third choice left back, more naturally a right back, is the man who gets the nod today. Let's see what he can do, I guess. Out on the right, we are going to go with Weisser. Uh, he is an exceptional talent, to be honest, uh, and has been performing pretty well this year. Not quite up to the standards that I expected right at the start of this save, but of course, given all his injuries, it's hardly surprising. In the midfield, we're going to go with Palacios and Pekata. Palacios has just been improving continually this year, which is very, very exciting to see. Pekata, of course, alongside him, a tremendous centre mid talent. Out on the left, we are going to go with Julian Brandt. He's still not really performing, but I'm going to put faith in him today. And I'm, all, I'm going to put him on attack. I'm going to do it, folks. I might. This might be a mistake. We've not done it before, but I'm going to give him a bit more permission to get further forward. Out on the right, we're going to go with Leon Bailey, who has been a bit hit and miss in recent form. For a large spell this year, he was really carrying us. I mean, he still kind of is. Six goals and four assists in 14 appearances is not too shabby at all. Hopefully he can put in a good Champions League performance today. Up top, we are going to go with Paulino. I really rate this guy. He's been a little bit out of form, but his performances on the training ground have been superb. I've got every little bit of faith in him that he's going to continue to improve. Other players we've got on the bench, of course, Kai Havertz, a real good attacking midfielder option that we have at our disposal. We also have Magil Almiron, who has been in great, great form, a player who we can really bring on and with his tremendous pace can really terrify teams. The rest of our team, though, we've got Ben Yedder as an option. He's not really inspired a lot of confidence, although I've not turned to him that often. Maybe today's the day he can make something happen for us. And then, of course, we have Volland, who has been, well, just a bit rubbish this year. Four goals in the Bundesliga isn't terrible, but he's way, way off the pace of last year where he got 17. He's just not been um, putting in performances that you'd expect from him. And, of course, we also have Origi, who, as I mentioned earlier, has broken his goal-scoring duck. Maybe today is the day that he can make something happen for us. Although, looking at his recent development, it's not that great really, is it? Of course, Fisher has been out for a very long time. He's still coming back to full fitness, but hopefully before too long, we'll have him at our disposal. He's a very vital player for us, of course. Tore his hamstring. It's been a recurring injury, but not available for today's game. 
Anyway, let's see how we get on going into this match. Get your score predictions down below. The Champions League, it all comes down to this. And I'm a little bit nervous. I'm going to be completely honest with you. Looking at their team, they've got Subasic in goal. They've got Desiglio, who I guess they signed from Juve. They've got uh, Yemerson, uh, Glick, Sidibe. In the final third, they've got Rafinha, Servi, Falcao leading the line as their captain. I mean, I'm not as scared as I thought I would be of his stats. He's not got that pace that he once had, Falcao. But you can see it. They've lost four of their last five games, boys. They're, they're, they're a wounded animal. A win here and a Bilbao draw is good enough. They're playing Manchester United. I'm hoping that with Manchester United already guaranteed top spot, they're not just going to, like, not try. You know, please, please do try, United. That's all I can really ask. But, um, yeah, we'll keep an eye out on the results as they come in. I guess I should also get up the latest scores. I missed my chance to do it. I wasn't quick enough. We've got a set piece here, though. We've been very good from set pieces. Weiser whips it in. Glick heads it clear. But as far as Sven Bender, maybe a second ball can come in here, Weiser. What can you do? Nice build-up play. Palacios. Paulino is there. It's offside. It's already telling me it's been disallowed. I'm not even going to get excited. The game spoilt it for me, there by telling me it was offside. Was it off? Oh, I'll tell you what. He's on. He He's on. 100% on. 100. Go back. Go back. I'm not happy. I feel like a fan suddenly. I want to time this right. Right. That is the point at which the ball is struck. Uh, vertical scrolling. That's not what I want. Okay, from this angle, I think he looks on, but I need a better angle. What is going to be the best one? Sideline? I mean, is he onside? I think he's level. I think that right leg is pretty on par with the other guy's leg. How does it look in 2D? 2D sometimes looks different. I mean, it's millimetres. I kind of miss 2D. Should I bring 2D back, folks? Answers on a post. I've said answer on a postcard too many times today. Jack, shut up. Um, but no, 2D I used to swear by, but I've kind of become... I've become a fan of the Football Manager 3D. I feel like it's improved so much in the last couple of years that now it's kind of worth using. I mean, was it off? Let's look at it here. I think he's on. From that angle, he looks on. I think the side of his foot is behind the back of the heel of the Monaco player. Of course, there's no VAR, so it doesn't, it doesn't matter what I think. Anyway, Leon Bailey, go on, my son. Have a go. I mean, if that's what knocks out the Champions League, there might be some salt. Maybe. I can't guarantee there won't be. <laughs> Looking at it early on, though, stat-wise, we are dominating. We lost to this Monaco team away from home in the mirror matchup 3-0. So we are performing really, really well at the moment. I'm hoping that we're going to be able to continue it and we'll just keep it going here. You can see Lukaku has scored, which is beneficial. Does that mean that we'd go second? If Bilbao lose and we draw, I don't know if that's good enough. I feel like it should be. I mean, they have worse goal difference. And the head-to-head... Head is it away goals on head-to-head? -head? Because I think we drew 0-0 at their stadium and 1-1 at our own. Does it really go to away goals on head-to-head? -head? So we need to win. Oh my gosh, panic. We, we need to win. Okay, well, this changes everything. I'm glad I know this now and not at the end of the game where like they score a last-minute goal... And it changes the whole, like, setup. And I'm, like, there celebrating. And actually, we finished third. Right, so we need a goal. Okay, well, that'll count. Thank you. Just football manager things. Paulino with the block. Playing that complete forward role. Our pressing style of play. Forcing Subasic to kick it at his head. Valkenman dispossessed. You thought the danger was over. Ronnie Lopez goes back to his keeper, which is always a bit risky. And Subasic just boots it straight into Paulino's head. I mean, what a finish. Up, up, give him an upgrade to his heading. Only 11. Should be like 20 with headers like that. The power he generated. But yes, 1-0 here. We're going very, very strong to start this game. And, uh, well, at half-time, it is going to be 1-0 here. Right, boys. I'm far from pleased. Only 1-0. We've, we've been pretty dominant in this game. Although, Monaco have definitely come, come alive as the game went on. But we're dominating possession. We are creating the better of the chances. I could do with a goal or two more. Just, just for comfort as much as anything. Um, of course, if we win here, uh, a draw for Bilbao I don't think would be enough. In fact, no, it wouldn't be. Can we score from this set piece? Bailey, back post. Ponkratic cleared away. Ta! Headed off the line again. Pegeta can't get it goalwards either. 
That was real ping pong there, wasn't it? So close to finding the back of the net. So close. Weisser, can you do something? We're on top in this game, but we need to make this period of dominance count. Weisser, Palacios, what can the Argentine do? What can he do? He, he puts it wide. I was getting ready to jump up out of my seat and celebrate. I'll be completely honest with you. 20 minutes left in this game. Does Siglio with it for them? I mean, surely not FM. Stop it. Rafinha, you know, they've got players who can make something out of nothing. Sidibi clears it. Polino, uh, Palacios, actually. It wasn't Paulino. Palacios with the play there. Julian Brandt on the attack duty. Look at him hunt. Look at him kill. Trying to force the mistake out. Monaco actually work it quite nicely. This could leave us short at the back. Servi down this left-hand side. Whips it in. Pongosic gets it out. Now to Ronnie. Mosquera, Jovetic is on the pitch for them. Nice tackle. Palacios distributes it to Leon Bailey. We could hit them on the counter. They've committed so many men forward. Leon, what can you do? Gives it inside to Weiss. A nice build-up play. That did not look like a penalty in 3D, but I'm going to take it. A chance here from the spot to make things more comfortable. I try to remember who I have step up for this. It's Lucas Bacata. What can he do? He gets it saved. It's a disaster. Still maybe a chance. Palacios hits it. Oh! <gasps> Just why that pe that could be huge. That could be huge. That miss. We've dominated this second half. Sven Bender's not the greatest game. I'm going to bring in Lucas Romero for him. Bacata, I'm sorry, mate, but I'm bringing on Almiron for you after that miss. Almiron got bags of pace. The kind of player can really have an impact, I think, in this kind of match. You know, with tiring legs, he can really kind of capitalise. They've changed their formation to a 4-2-2-4 with kind of two attacking midfielders and two strikers. I'm going to stick with what we're doing. Julian Brandt, Paulino, bury that, my son. Lovely finish. It's his second goal of the game. Brandt with the assist. Maybe we should play him on attacking duty more often. But, uh, yeah, 2-0. A lovely finish by Paulino. And that should be that. Two minutes left this game. I can't see them getting two goals. Julian Brandt to Paulino. Not a strike with a ton of power. Just tucks it away into that bottom corner. He wheels away in celebration. I mean, you can't blame him. Was it offside? Of course it wasn't. Of course it was. Look, that one was definitely onside. Paulino, lovely finish. I mean, if the first goal was fortunate, that one was as composed as you like. I mean, could we make it free? Weisser whips it in. Wagner man can't get there. Julian, what can you do? He goes back to Jonathan Tau. I mean, build from the back. I like it. Spreads the play to Leon out on this right-hand side. Romero, on off the bench. Don't get sent off today, please, Lucas. Almiron, what's he going to do? What's he going to do? Using that pace, falls to Leon Bailey who hits the woodwork. I mean, it could have been a few more this game really, couldn't it? Two clear-cut chances, four half chances. We've looked very, very good this game. Very good. Extremely happy to see it. Hopefully, this is a sign of things to come. Ball tried to be dinked over. They deal with it. Wagner man nods it down. Booted, clear. Pongrasic gets it. I mean, why am I commentating this? It's the end of the game, Jack. Nothing's going to happen unless there's another goal, which I want to believe could happen. Go on, Leon. Drives at this defence. Edge of the area. Dispossessed. Palacios with it now. Spreads it to Julian. I mean, we want blood. We want free. Oh, that looked like a naughty foul, didn't it, really? Right. I mean, that's going to be all she wrote. We've been massively on top for the entirety of this game. Barring a Bilbao miracle, which is not going to happen. They're not going to turn around this loss into a win. I'm not sure what the score is, but it doesn't really matter. But um, yeah, there you go. 2-0. What a performance that was. Really dominant. Paulino, man of the match. But to be honest, the whole team deserve a lot of credit there. We looked really, really superb throughout that entire game. In terms of when we'll be back, we've got the um, game against Wolfsburg next. Do I want to do that today? You know what? I do want to do that today. Um, I'm not going to do the bit in, all in between because I want to keep this episode under 30 minutes if I can. So guys, I'm going to go forward to that game against Wolfsburg. Don't go anywhere. It's going to be a cracker. Okay, guys, so we're back here for the second game of today's episode against Wolfsburg. Um, I'm not going to change the team for the today's game. I'm going to rest all the players. There's going to be a little bit of injury risk here. But we did just perform so well against uh, Monaco that I don't want to change the team. And that might come back to bite me massively. Uh, I might drop Bacater after the penalty misses. Recent form hasn't been that great, actually, Kai Havertz. Yeah, you know what, Kai? You deserve a nod and a run out today. Show us what you're made of. Elsewhere in the team, Julian Brand still not playing that well. I could drop Paulino in deeper and then bring in Volland. 
I guess the other option would be to bring in Origi to play inside forward, which he can definitely do. Let's give that a go. You know what? I'm going to rotate things a little bit. It could be problematic, but the rest of the team remains largely unchanged going into this match. I will say... I don't know if I can show it, actually. Just looking at uh, Bundesliga scores. I was looking here at Dortmund's game. They lost 6-0 to Frankfurt. I do not know what has happened to Dortmund this year. They got absolutely slain. You can see here as well, Leipzig only drew against Hanover. Unfortunately for us, Schalke did win, as did Werder Bremen, which does mean if we just look at the league table, we dropped down to fourth. A win here would close the gap on Wolfsburg to four goals, or four points, rather. Uh, a loss here could be kind of bad we'd be down in fourth which would be way 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 below where we want to be at this part in the season you know approaching the halfway point when you consider how ba bad like Leipzig, Bayern and Dortmund are doing our big rivals this year it's pretty inexcusable how lackluster we've been anyway this is the team we're going to go with as I said it's not really changing from the previous match a bit of a risk of injury but uh, well hopefully we can do good here just have a look at their uh, team here that as you can see they've got Bellarabi our former man Bittencourt uh, Di Matter. I mean, you look at this Wolfsburg team, and I don't mean any disrespect to any of the players here. They're not that great. I mean, you can see the kind of scout scores them. Felix Udekai is a very, very good player, I will say, as is Rousselon. But a lot of these players are, I'd say, punching above their weight, if I'm being honest. And I feel like we should be beating them. But anyway, let's see how we do get on going into today's game. Um... We've not had, obviously, a lot of time to recover, uh, but we'll have to see how we get on. You can see here uh, a draw. We'd go above Schalke, but that doesn't really matter for the here and now. We need to focus on this game, of course. Great to get through to the Champions League knockout stages. I didn't really make as much of that as I perhaps should have done after the win against Monaco. That is a massive achievement, considering the group of death we were in, considering we were third seeds... Uh, to finish second in that group and get to the knockout stages is huge, and that's something that we've really got to look forward to now after Christmas. Anyway, let's see how we can get on here. Obviously, I want a good start, and that is great pressure by Arigi. He goes inside to Polino. Bailey's there. He's got to score it. Surely, what a stop that is by Timo Horn. But first real chance of the game goes our way. We are at home for this match, so despite how good Wolfsburg have been, I expect us to win this. We have players capable of winning this match, and through the, the rain here on the pitch, it's lashing down. We need to be scoring. Is that going to be given? That is a weird goal. It's an own goal. I don't. I thought it was going to be disallowed because the camera didn't move. If the camera doesn't move like this, sometimes it means the goal's been disallowed or it's going to VAR. So it was a muted celebration by me. The actual build-up play here was really, really nice. You can see Weiss just pulls it across. Paulino probably would have scored. The tackle came in and, well, it was given. Paulino appeals, I think, for a penalty there. He, it wasn't given to him. But yeah, first blood us in this game. But, well, we've got plenty of time in this game to go and plenty of defending to do. You can see he's sitting quite deep here, inviting the shot. Fradeski, that was going miles wide. He decides to go for a save for the cameras, I think, that one. Probably the best way to phrase it. Can we deal with this here now? Leon Bailey on it and, well, fouled at the edge of the box. 1-0, 20 minutes gone. They've been pretty good so far, Wolfsburg, in terms of having possession. Palmy's tempted to go Gengen pressing early on in this game. And uh, really, you know, just change the system a little bit and push harder. Obviously, we're quite well adapted this year with our team to just kind of change things up like this. This is like a system that we can very much just change to on the fly. Um, we'll swap Polino and Origi around as well, I think. As we have a set piece. Can we get in? Havertz! Someone have a go. Blocked off the line. Free clear cut chances in a matter of seconds there. We could just not find it through to the back of the net, unfortunately for us. Superb defending. Just Wolfsburg committed. Throwing men at the, the, the body, well, bodies at the ball. And whilst I was thinking about tactical changes, we were, well, barraging the net. Unfortunately, we just couldn't find a way through. I am going to go through with these changes despite that chance we've had there. We have struggled a little bit for possession in this game. I'm kind of happy that Wolfsburg have more of the ball if they want it, but we are going to really try and rush their play, really try and cause them problems. And while 40 minutes gone, you can see here they're trying to play out from the back. So I feel like our tactical pressing should work well for us here as we're... Going to try and force a mistake maybe out of Timo Horn. Of course, we did it against Monaco last match. The pressing really causing them issues. But, of course, if they do find the ball through here, Wolfsburg, they are going to perhaps get through to our soft defence. As Di Matta has a chance. What a save for Adeski. Give that man a coconut. What a save by the Finn. Now can we build something here? Unfortunately not. Blocked away. Paulino. Can, can we do anything here? 
That's really the question. Havertz to Bailey. Go on, Leon. Through on goal. Clean through. Can he score? Yes, he can. From a clear-cut chance at one end to the counter-attack incisively on the other. What a pass by Kai Havertz as well. The run by Leon Bailey superb. The tactical changes work wonders. You can see we just press so high here. Just cut out all the passing lanes. Leon alive to the threat. Was that Felix Udakai at the back who was just daydreaming? It was. And, uh, well, Leon Bailey capitalises. And right before half-time, a sucker punch to the gut of Wolfsburg is going to see us take the lead in this game. Great, great first-half performance. Cannot fault the lads' effort one little bit. Um... Yeah, I'm very pleased with that, boys. Just keep it going now. Wolfsburg, since we've done the tactical change, we've done, created even more, it feels like. Maybe leaving ourselves slightly open at the back. It's a risky game to play, but I feel like with our players, we're more than capable of playing this pressing style and maintaining it. If we get a third goal, I might switch back to the previous style just to slow down the pace a little bit with all the injury risks we've got. It would be unnecessary, I think, to press for the entire game, especially three goals up. But, well, we've got a chance here. Kai Havertz, long-range effort off the crossbar. What an effort, my son. I mean, are they going to go for the short goal kick here? They are. So let's press. Let's push here. Let's try and funnel them into the wide areas where we can win back the ball more easily. Bellarabi, our former man. It's not been a fond return so far back to his old stomping ground. But this game is not over yet. We cannot afford to take it for granted. There is still 40 minutes left in this match. Wagner man, lovely tackle by him. Paulino inside to Kai Havertz. He threads through Origi this time. Can Origi get on the goal-scoring uh, list. He can't, unfortunately. Horn with the save. A nice little run, though, by Origi. And another chance for us. We're creating so much this game. Is that going to be a pen? I think that was outside the box. We're going to VAR. I'm pretty sure it's outside the box. I'm not going to get my hopes up. Um, I have actually changed it with the tactics recently. I forgot to mention this. I was noticing that both our advanced playmaker and our box-to-box -box midfielder um, sometimes wasted the ball. So I've set our advanced playmaker um, in our control style. If we just go to it to shoot less often. Bakata was giving away a lot of the ball and just having lots of speculative long shots. I checked the stats. Our centre mids had the most shots out of all the players in our team, which just doesn't make any sense at all. So having them shoot less often, they're kind of looking for passes a little bit more. And I think it's really helping us with our creativity in the middle of the pitch, which obviously is great to see. Anyway, Rodeski, don't go wandering too much. I need you to stay in goal. Nice build-up play, though, from the back here. Leon Bailey tries to thread through Origi, who's clean for on goal. Finish that! Devok Origi with the goal. Welcome back to some form. He scored a couple of league games ago. He's got a goal here when we've given him the nod to start the game. It's 3-0. I'm going to change the tactical style now to uh, our less intense style of play. I'm also going to just tell us to press not quite so often. We can be a little bit less, uh, I guess, in a rush here, you know, we can really try and slow down this game. Try and break down the play as much as possible, I think, now for the remaining 30 minutes of this match. It's been a great performance from us, you'd have to say. We've deserved this. Created so many opportunities as this game's gone on. And the best thing is we've been clinical with them. We've taken those opportunities that came. Can we get another? Kai. I mean, it'd be good to deal some damage to Wolfsburg's goal difference and help our head-to-head -head as well while we're at it. So Bender tries to go wide. It was red. Got to be a little wary still on the counter-attack, perhaps. Di Matter here, running forward. Ball to the back post. Rodeski got a hand to it. It wasn't strong enough. Bracalo with the goal. Wolfsburg may be looking for a route back into this game. Let's just drop our full-backs a little bit deeper. Is anyone not performing? Palacios hasn't had the best of games. Paulino's been a bit quiet as well, so I think we'll go for a double change. Um, we'll bring on uh, Julian Brandt and Piquetta on off the bench. Just some fresh legs in midfield as much as anything, just to try and see this game out. But yeah, Rigi's had a great game. Bailey, one assist, one goal as well to his name. Could he get another one? Whips it back post. Ta ah, narrowly over the crossbar. Wasn't bad at all, though, by him. With 15 minutes left in this game, we'd have to say we've been very, very solid. Besides that one kind of counter-attack, the Wolfsburg really haven't threatened our goal for any extended period of time. It's been a largely comfortable performance. Of course, if we concede now with 10 minutes left, it might become squeaky bum time. So let's not lose our focus, please, boys. Nice block. Kai Havertz. Even with our change to a slightly slower style of play, we're creating opportunities and running forward. What a ball that is by Bailey. Can we get it across? Brandt goes on his own. He probably could have passed it and squared it to Leon for what would have been, been a great passing move. Unfortunately, he got greedy. Back post, though. Ta, oh, right across the front of goal. Just needed a little touch from anyone. 
but Timo Horn did hold on to it. Five minutes left in this game. I mean, we've been on top in this game and very, very dominant. We're going to get the win here, and we very, very much deserve it. We've kind of changed our tactics a little bit on the fly here, but we've really, really benefited from just a great attacking display. Not had a whole host of possession, but when we've had it, we've had it in their half. We've not let Wolfsburg play their game, passing it out from the back, which is something they've done very well this year. And a 3-1 win here sees us go second in the league, and it does close that gap on Wolfsburg to, uh, well, just four points and maybe just proving that they're not unbeatable. 3-1, great performance by the whole team. Very, very happy with that, boys. That was very much deserved. And hopefully we can build off that now in the build-up to the winter break. Only a few games now, um, between now and kind of the winter break. You can see here, it's still very close at the top. Schalke, to us, is very tight. Bayern, I mean, you'd have to say they are way off the pace. They've got a game tomorrow, so which I guess we'll go and watch. We'll see how they get on in their match. Bayern, I'd like to see them lose, purely from a selfish perspective of, I want the league to be more interesting. Uh, with, you know, lots of weird results and an unusual top four might really mix up the hierarchy in Germany. Of course, a league that's... Uh, it's got a status quo, I guess, in real life with Bayern always leading the ways. And uh, it's kind of been upset this season for a series of just mad events. The fact that Dortmund lost 6-0 is just mind-blowing to me. I, I can't believe they've lost that badly. Right, Herfer Berlin in 16th. Can you do us a favour, Herfer? I want to believe in you. I want to believe in you. Cologne and Hoffenheim draw. Cologne doing us a favour. Herfer, but I mean, look at that. Thank you very much, Herfer. 1-0. I mean, Bayern, they've lost more than they've won now. They are so far off the pace, it's embarrassing. I mean, Dortmund, only four points above the drop. Leipzig on 22 points as well. What has happened this season? After the win against Wolfsburg, if we can just find some good form, you've really got to back us to do well. In terms of when we'll be back, guys, I think it'll be after the international break. We've got games away from home, or rather the winter break, sorry. We've got games at home against Bayern and Dortmund. I might do those to the double header. We might just do the Bayern game because with Dortmund performing so poorly, I don't know how interesting that game's going to be in terms of a real significant one. But I feel like playing Bayern Munich is always a big occasion. Regardless, I do hope you enjoyed today's slightly longer episode. As always, if you did, do leave a like on the video. If you're new around here, subscribe. And other than that, it is me, Jack. And I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out. Just to say the end of this video, guys, thank you to all my supporters over on Patreon. Obviously, we launched that last week. TTTH, Hilti Brandt, Dan Moody, Paul Columbali, Miles Miller, Chris Carpenter, Edward Saunders, and Josh Bradbury. You guys are absolute legends. 